This is my 48 hour first impressions of the MacBook Pro 2021. This is the 14 inch with the M1 Pro CPU that I decided to get to finally get a bit of a try with macOS that I haven't used for the past four or five years. I'm W2 Best, I make in-depth gear views and tutorials. And if you like this video, it would be super awesome if you want to put a like on the video. And if you want to communicate with me, you can do so in the comment section below or on Instagram where I'm also at W2 Best. I just moved into a new place and this is the first video I'm shooting here. Because of that I wasn't using the computer much during the weekend, but I got Friday with it and I got today Monday with it. So two full work days to see what I think about this device. The things that you can see up here in the very front, you have the screen, which is really amazing I think. You have the webcam, the notch is annoying, but the webcam quality is super good and it actually makes a difference when you're in a video meeting having both the resolution but also that amount of light that it can take in that really gives a much better look to you when you're in meetings. And then you have the speakers and the speakers are really so much better than anything I've tried in a very long time and it's just the kind of speakers that actually need you to not have an external speaker. They are loud enough, clear enough and have enough bass to really work as my main speaker when I'm here in a relatively small apartment. The next very obvious thing is the performance, but not only the performance, but more so the performance to battery life and to noise and heat levels. And basically when I was editing the unboxing video of this machine, that was a 12 minute video, not advanced by any means, but a 12 minute full HD video. On my Intel i5 CPU, rendering a project like that will typically take somewhere around 10 to 12 minutes. On my AMD 5800U, rendering a project like that would take around 5 to 6 minutes. On the M1 Pro, rendering this project took 1 minute and 54 seconds. This is something that is incredibly good in combination with the fact that it wasn't giving out any kind of fan noise and there was no noticeable heat from the device. Moreover, when I was doing this only on battery power, it was about an hour of work that is relatively heavy, both the editing and the rendering. And that drained about 4% of the battery life. I'm doing more battery testing during these next few weeks before giving out my full review. But the battery is really one of the pros here as well. Even though it's a powerful laptop with a very power hungry screen, this has really worked well in terms of battery life. But of course there are some cons as well. And I think that one of the main cons is actually the format of the laptop. It is quite thick and it is quite heavy compared to the competition. I'm used to using the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 or Slim 7 Pro. And lately I've been using IdeaPad 5 Pro. And they are all quite a bit more lightweight compared to this device. So both the thickness and the weight definitely not the biggest plus in my book. The second thing I find as a con here, I mentioned in the unboxing video, and I still find it pretty annoying that these cut out pieces here in the chassis are relatively sharp and I tend to get stuck in them when I pick up the laptop, both when it's open and when it's closed. I think these might be for cooling and ventilation, but I still think that this is a pretty annoying design choice as it is where you normally carry a laptop on the side there. The next con I figure is the keyboard. And basically I find the keyboard to still be too low travel, so it's not as comfortable to type on as most of the Windows keyboards that I have been trying out recently. But it's not only that, it also really picks up fingerprints quite a lot and it gives this smudgy feeling to the keys, which is not nice because you're always having your fingers and your fingerprints on the keys. And I find myself constantly having to wipe them off to try to make it look as clean as possible. And last but not least, one thing that I have to mention here when talking about the cons is of course the price of this device. And I knew of course what I was paying and I think it's worth paying that to be able to try out the experience and I wanted to spend this money. But there was one thing that I didn't really think that much about and it's that when you bring something along that is as expensive as this machine is, this one is the base model and it's 2400 euros. So it's way way more expensive than anything I have bought to review on this channel before. 
When you bring something along in that kind of price category, you are much more afraid of it being stolen or you're gonna drop it or spill something on it. And that gives a lot less peace of mind compared to using a unit that is around the thousand dollar price tag. And I think that is actually one of the major things for me when using this device, that I'm a little bit scared that I'm gonna damage it. I know I have okay insurances, but still it's something that is always on my mind when using such an expensive device. Is the M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch for 2021 worth the 2400 euro price tag? That is something I am currently evaluating and I will be telling you more what I think about it in my full review that will drop after I got some more solid use time with this machine. I don't want to hurry too much to release that kind of review. I would rather give you my honest experience from using this for a while and giving you as much info as possible in that review video. If you want to see that, stay tuned here by subscribing to the channel and then I will see you pretty soon in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye bye.